Oh, and here he is. I see him. And I've been to um, I've been to every single stadium. Wow. Yeah. Well, hello everyone. We're having such a nice chat, Paul and I are, because I was just telling him how I am a big Chicago Cub fan ever since I was a little girl, and he just told me that his father played for the Chicago Cubs. Now, for how many seasons was he on in the Cubs? I think he was only with the Cubs for three or four seasons. Not too short. I mean, mainly because I was not even walking yet, but. But uh, I think it was three or four seasons. He's, he's wow. been the majority of the time in uh, the Tigers as well. That is so exciting. Awesome. Yeah, I just looked him up. And, and when I put in your name, Paul Blair, he's popped right up. Yep. You probably see my grandpa in there as well because he played for the Yankees and the Orioles. And he's, uh, don't tell my dad this, even though it's on live, but he's a lot better than my dad. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the best interfielders that ever played the game. So it, it's hard to beat him. Wow, that is, and, and so is baseball in your blood? Or baseball is in my blood, um, definitely. But I am a uh, a football guy through and through. I played in college, um, played all the way through Pop Warner to college, and then uh, went to a couple combines. Realized that uh, my size and the speed that I have were the same size and speed of people that were like six, seven, and four hundred pounds. So it was like time to find another passion, and so here I am. It is incredible to see how fast some of those big football players and how agile they can yeah. be. I used to think I was fast, but until I uh, lined up against somebody that was 6'7", 350 pounds and ran the same speed as me. Yeah, it's crazy, it's right? Wild. I always say, like, I love watching football. I don't understand it as nearly as much as I understand baseball. But yeah. I always say, you know, when those runners, they go back for a pass, when they – catch that ball it's a little bit like ballet i mean for how sure well they can be how high they can jump how how much they can stretch their arms and, and grab that ball out of mid yep. it's pretty it's kind of a beautiful thing when you think about it yeah for me it's just trying to run as fast because i was super little in in college i was compared to everyone else i was six one like 185 190 pounds and for me, it was being like ballet as for how can I get to the sideline away from these people as fast as possible before they crush me. You just wanted to live, huh? Exactly. Yeah. It is funny how they all, you know, tackle each other and then get back up and do the next play. I always wonder, like, oh, my God, if he's dead. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Interesting. Well, welcome, everyone. This is actually not sports talk radio. It's really first spring. <laughs> Uh, so we are here, as you well know, Purse Strings is here in our group live every Thursday at noon. And we are always bringing some of our Purse Strings approved professionals to the table and having them share their wisdom and knowledge and skills around different things finance. Today we have Paul Blair, so we're happy to have him today. And um, yeah, you know, Purse Strings is all about ensuring women are set financially. Our tools and resources are free for the taking. So we're always asking women to share, share away, um, let them know about our site, our resources, follow us on social media, and that we provide a vetted list of top tier financial professionals. So if you need an attorney, a lender, a realtor, a financial advisor, a PNC agent, uh, you need a divorce coach, you need a financial coach, we've got you covered. Um, and we're always looking high and low for those financial professionals who really do want to serve a female market and who are top in their game. And we're bringing you one today, Paul Blair. Uh, he uh, came to us as a referral and we were so excited to meet him. Uh, so many people have raved about him, his services, what he does for them, the services he provides. So, Paul, we're glad to have you here today. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, to speak to everyone and hopefully uh, provide even just one thing that will uh, brighten someone's day or, or change their mindset a little bit about finance. Sure, sure, great. Maybe. Yeah, we're excited to have you. Um, we're just going to give one more minute for people to jump on no um, before I give a little intro to Paul here. Yeah, and Paul. as everyone knows, um, if you want to share this or if you have a friend or neighbor who can't make it to the live we record it and we will curate a one-page um list and paul this will go to you as well of your salient points your next steps 
your contact information if people want to reach out to you and get more information. Um, and we post that as well in this group, as well as on YouTube, and we'll send it along to Paul. So it's another way that we like to ripple out um, all the information across the country. So, Paul, you're in California. Westlake Village, California. So just right outside of Los Angeles, kind of right in the in between Ventura and Calabasas. Got it. Yeah, and you said it was hot there today. It's pretty toasty. It's been toasty for a while. It's I guess part of being a California, we're used to it where Christmas, I think last year was a 72 or 80 degrees. So not too bad. Couldn't imagine. I just couldn't imagine. <laughs> we're so used oh. to being, uh, you know, bombarded with snow around Christmas time. So negative yeah. 20 with wind chill or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, usually. Yeah. It's casual. Us Midwesterners, you know. <laughs> the way um, it is. All right. Well, we'll just jump in. Um, this is Paul Blair, and he is a financial professional from Edward Jones. Um, he is dedicated to helping you achieve your financial goals. Um, he is a partner with you to helping um, you reach security, and he will assess your level of acceptable risk and balance it with customized strategy to help you build long-term goals. Um, he is a valuable resource to help serve those at all levels, no matter if you're a beginner, a business owner, a retiree. Um, and net worth is also a wide range as well. Um, I do want to bring light that Paul Blair is also just a normal average human who's also scuba diving, wine tasting, or at a sushi bar, um, DJing, and then he was just telling me how he's also gaming um, as well. So, wow, Paul's staying busy. Um, <laughs> I, I tried to in Master Dive, by the way, recently, so I'm excited about that. Wow, that's impressive. That's super impressive. We love learning all these things our professionals do. do outside I, of like their, you know, financial it, professional role. It's like, it's always like, what's the next thing I can accomplish or do, I guess you can say. Yeah, we've got that A++ personality. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Well, we will give the floor to you, Paul. Perfect. So we can just start off on slide one. Um, I don't think I can see on, on your end, but... Um, other than that, I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Hopefully, like I mentioned, I could bring at least just a little bit of value to uh, someone out there that's listening. Um, but just to give you a brief a brief introduction, my name is Paul Blair. As mentioned, I'm a financial advisor with Edward Jones. I'm here. I'm out here in Westlake Village, California. I've worked with Edward Jones for about seven years now, and I've been in the community um, for about that time, I grew up in the South, so if you ever hear that uh, down South slang come out, excuse me a little bit, but uh, other than that, I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida, um, went up to, to school to play uh, football in West Virginia, got a couple of business administration, finance degree, and a minor in criminal justice, just a little background on me, um, but I became a financial advisor because I have a passion for investing and helping people meet their financial goals. Um, this is also a big reason why I come here to present today, to help educate some people and um, bring light to things that you might not have, have thought about. Um, the part of my work I enjoy the most is helping my clients meet their financial goals. It's an opportunity to change lives. And to accomplish that, I must truly know what's important um, to them and their financial goals in general. So that's definitely a huge thing over here at Edward Jones. We take time to understand individuals. Um, we don't have any cookie cutter portfolios or or one one size fits all type of investments we recommend to everyone everyone's different and we definitely take the time and that's what i feel like separates us from a lot of uh, firms out there to understand not only you as a person your values but also your financial goals and so um, that being said we can go to slide two perfect so as you know, um, it's an ever-changing world out there. Technology is, is finding new ways for us to connect, communicate, and live longer. Um, these are exciting times, but can be a little overwhelming at times. Um, there's a wealth of financial information out there, and some of it's quite a bit of noise. Um, what I like to do is just kind of separate the noise and make things simple, keep investing simple, uh, because it really is at the end of the day. Um, so I invite you out to, to hear me speak today. Um, to think about some unique challenges and opportunities for women when it comes to investing. And I want to help cut through some of that financial noise, like I mentioned. Um, so I just want to share five questions that I feel everyone should ask themselves to help 
um, connect you to your financial goals and values. And hopefully you'll leave here today feeling just a little bit better um, about your financial direction. And so I'm, I'm also good to go to the third one. So we'll start off with just a little fun uh, interactive game. So I'll ask just three questions um, towards the front and we'll get the answers towards the, the end. And it's just simply fact or fiction. Um, so the first one, and that next slide is perfect, um, would be nearly 70% of women are confident in how much they are saving for retirement. So that would either be fact or fiction. We will have a, an actual um, number towards the end. But um, as a part of our discussion today, I'm going to share, like I mentioned, the five questions and ask yourself uh, to connect to your financial goals. Uh, the first of these steps, which we'll discuss in more details in a few moments, is to evaluate where you are today. And in other words, it's to uh, it's difficult to determine your financial goals sometimes and a strategy to pursue them and whether or not that strategy is achievable. Um, if you don't first understand where you are today, hopefully after this, we can we can solve that a little bit. Next slide. Perfect. Perfect. So the next factor fiction um, is women are about eight times as likely as men to report that they have work interruptions due to caring for children. Um, this could be either pregnancy or this could be sick children at home that you have to take off of work and, and take care of them. It could be a, a multitude of things. So we'll do facts of fact or fiction on this. And then to the last, the next question, which is the last one. Next slide. Perfect. Nearly 40% of women are primary breadwinners in their family. So that being said, let's reveal some of the answers going forward. So the first one was nearly 70% of women are confident in how much they are saving for retirement. Um, so with this answer would be fiction. It's about 51% of women say that they're confident in saving uh, enough for their retirement and being able to retire comfortably compared to 68% of men. Um, if you don't have a well-defined goal, it makes it much more challenging to work towards. Um, that's why we recommend setting SMART goals, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit coming forward in the next couple of slides. So on to the next factor, fiction. To number two, women are about eight times as likely as men to report they have work interruptions due to caring for their children. And that is a fact. Um, women are eight times more likely than men to look after sick children, manage their children's schedule, go to sports, um, go to ballet, et cetera, et cetera, which takes time out of their workday or their, their responsibilities. This can be challenging for sure um, and, and definitely change the family dynamics. But this is a way um, from the workforce could result in women accumulating less time and less money towards retirement because they're spending their time in other places. Um, next slide, please. Perfect. And then last question is nearly 40% of women are primary breadwinners winners in their family. This is fiction. Um, the actual statistics is 54% of women um, surveyed are the primary breadwinners of their family, um, including 30% who are married and generating more than half of the household income. So these are all um, cool, fun facts that I, I thought I'd bring to the table um, and share with you. But now getting into the, the fun stuff, um, we'll start on the first slide of the uh, first questions. So perfect. <clears throat> and skip this slide, please. Thank you. Or the uh, one through five, please. Perfect. So these are the five questions that we're going to go over today. Um, we're definitely going to start uh, with, with number one being, where are we today? Um, so through the needs of each person next might be different from each person from time to time. Um, using these five questions as part of the five step process, this can help define um, your long term financial goals and help you build a strategy by understanding some of the concerns that you need to consider um, going forward and be in a better position to build and adjust your strategy over the long the long term. So next slide, please. Perfect. So first of the five questions you should ask is, where am I today? In other words, your current financial situation. Many people have a, a general idea of where they stand financially, but it's important to have a clear understanding of your complete financial picture. Think of it, I guess you can think of it as a, a GPS in your phone or your car. If you're looking for directions to get from here to there, you need to know where here is 
and have to be able to have a more precise route going forward about your location and your destination where you want to be. Um, the more likely the device will be at that point in time, your iPhone or your GPS will be able to give you directions and, and head in the right path to financial success. And that's kind of where I step in and help you find out where you are today. Um, next slide. So question two that I feel like every single um, person, man or woman, but today definitely women should be asking themselves where you would like to be. And to, to actually tune in on this question is definitely just thinking about value versus goals. Um, where would you like to be is really about your values versus goals. Um, another analogy to help you kind of understand this is the difference between going back to that phone is when you think of technology changing all the time, there's a new phone kind of coming out every month at this, at this month and uh, time in, that we're in. And it, Necessarily, if you want that new phone or need that new phone, let's just say you, you want one and you have a specific reason, perhaps, of why you, you want that phone, whether it's outdated or damaged um, or maybe just you live a busy life and you want a longer battery to keep up with your busy lifestyle. In this simple analogy, the goal is, to desi is the desire to purchase the phone. The value is the question you ask is, why is this new phone important to me? Why do I need a new phone? And values are about um, beliefs and they should drive your goals. Goals are tangible things or experiences that that we carry specific monetary value to. And for instance, a goal may be paying down debt, buying a house for traveling, um, values as for setting for retirement, having an actual exact date that you want to retire, um, financial freedom. Um, all these things are, are long term goals that we can we can ask ourselves where we would like to be. But then the next step going into the next slide. Perfect. Values versus goals. One more. I'm sorry. I was, I was working ahead of you. Perfect. So that would be just determining your values and goals and writing these things down um, on, a, on a daily basis. You don't necessarily have to do it for uh, uh, your goals for today if you don't like, but definitely your yearly goals are something that you would like to achieve financially. The, this way you can hold yourself accountable and um, going forward, you can you can definitely um, what's the word I'm looking for here, uh, attack and, and appreciate these goals and create smart goals for them, which we'll go over in a little bit. Next slide, please. Perfect. So things that you can definitely achieve today or, or try to plan that are, are most valuable. Um, I wrote a couple of these down or preparing for retirement. So things like creating a, a 401k plan or creating an IRA or, or coming up with a strategy of how much you need to put into your retirement on a given year to eventually achieve those goals. And then living in retirement, meaning making your dollars that you worked so hard for your whole entire life stretch out where you never have to worry about running out of money and you live comfortably in the lifestyle that you want to live all the way throughout your retirement. And then also leaving a legacy possibly to your family um, that could be very beneficial to, to the growth of your, your legacy, I guess you could say. Um, paying for education, such as a child or a grandchild. This is also something that uh, are common goals for, for women in the industry. Um, and there's definitely multiple different ways to achieve paying for education. And a lot of tools that we have over here at Edward Jones that can kind of think of um, the inflation of college, meaning a college that's $30,000 annually this year in 18 years, most likely is not going to be $30,000. It's gonna be maybe 60 or, or $70,000 due to inflation. And to come up with exact plans and, and tools and how much we need to put down on a, a monthly basis can definitely help with achieving certain goals like that. And then one of my favorite things to, to do is planning for the unexpected. So. A lot of people will have a, a the top notch, most beautiful portfolio you could possibly have. They're perfectly set, um, sleep comfortable at night. Nothing's bothering them at all. But that being said, they're not planning for that unexpected job loss or that unexpected disability or even, um, and God forbid, a lack of words, a death in the family or with themselves. Um, I help protect those portfolios that we create and build in order to um, uh, achieve a legacy as well to uh, beneficiaries of that family. So for example, if a husband and, and wife are, 
are working. And as we just learned earlier, the majority in the United States are of women are the breadwinners in the family. If something were to happen um, to the wife, we need to also be able to protect the husband to be able to pay that mortgage going forward to take care of the kids. And that leads into planning for your estate inheritance. And so we do all of these things over here. Um, I take pride in, in going through each one of these steps individually because it's, it's more of a holistic plan rather than just saying, hey, buy XYZ stock or hey, buy XYZ mutual fund. It gets a little deeper when, when giving financial advice to not just anyone. Um, so next slide, please. Perfect. So this is Denise. Um, just want to introduce like kind of a hypothetical of how we can help plan a little background on Denise. Um, she's the oldest of three children. She's personally uh, responsible um, and self-reliant, I guess you can say. She's always uh, had important values to her, such as planning for retirement and being financial, financially secure. But sometimes she had a during, along her way, she had a couple of uh, setbacks that stopped her from achieving these goals. Um, she's married in her 20s, um, but her husband grew apart from her. And I'm giving you kind of a detailed synopsis of it. Um, she was divorced in her early 30s and she's uh, recently remarried and, have, and has a new job. Um, she has a lot of life changes, as I mentioned, during during the course of her life. Um, and she values consistency and helps driving um, and help helping people to drive meet their goals as well. So let's just go to the next slide, which we'll go over a basic um, uh, fund. So this is an emergency fund. This is a basic goal that a lot of people have out there that I help solve. Um, so Denise's goal is an emergency fund. Um, so let's take a step back from that um, summary that I gave you when Denise was in her mid twenties. She read that financial experts recommend that you have at least six months of uh, emergency emergency funds for living expenses. So over a period of seven years, she established an emergency fund and worked towards that goal. Um, thankfully, that came in handy when Denise was laid off from her human resources position two years ago, um, and she had a dip and she had to dip into that fund to keep things running. And was very fortunate that she set that aside. Because if she didn't, she would have uh, possibly set back her retirement, possibly put her in, in very bad uh, situations going forward financially. Um, so just reviewing your budget and setting a goal for those type of things can definitely help. This scenario is just giving you a, a small um, type of situation that where if you don't have everything set up beforehand, the investments and the retirement planning can possibly be derailed by not having these type of plans um, set place. So next slide, please. Which brings us to the third question is, can I get there? Um, once you know where you want to be and, and where you want to go, the next question that you can definitely ask is, can I get there? So that's definitely sitting down with me, going over some SMART goals. I know a lot of people listening might have, have heard small, SMART goals many times down the, down the path, um, but this is definitely something that we keep at the core when definitely thinking about investments. So going forward to the next slide, we'll start with some smart goals started and, and go back to the scenario of Denise's emergency fund. So S definitely stands for specific. Um, and so when it came to her, she definitely needed that $6,000 to make her emergency fund whole as a portion in case she lost her job. So that would be something very specific, um, which is going into the exact amount of what she wants to need uh, once to save for and then also going into how much she wants to contribute each month to uh, meet that goal, which leads us to the M, which is measurable. So how can you measure something like that? And so rather than putting away random amounts, um, $100 here, $250 and then $25 the next month, she set a goal for a, same, uh, a monthly contribution that definitely helped her achieve that goal of $6,000 and could measure her contributions. Um, which leads us into A, which is for achievable. Um, and that's definitely saying going and doing the budget sheet. So going down and doing a comprehensive budget and saying, hey, is $306,000 upfront um, achievable? And she being honest with herself and saying no. So she set up a contribution system where it was $350 a month, every month, um, and going through and seeing where she can cut costs. And that's that made it achievable for that situation. Leading into R, which is for relevant, which will <clears throat> setting aside money each month directly impacts um, her financial security, which reflects Denise's values of self-reliance and responsibility. 
So the goal was extremely relevant to Denise, um, which leads us into the last one, which is finally the T. Um, the T is for time frame. So she set up that $350 a month um, for 18 months, and she had that set in stone. She had her budget um, set out, and she was really disciplined. So she definitely achieved all of her goals by just doing a simple method of, of SMART goals, which leads us into the next slide, which is question number four. And that's, how do I get there? Um, how do I get there is more important than just developing a strategy like one might think. It's also putting that strategy into actions. There are very few um, guarantees when it comes to life, but one thing that you can be sure of is if you start working towards your goals, you won't achieve them, in other words, unless you have that plan and you work the plan and you stay to that plan. Um, next slide, please. Perfect. <clears throat> so your overall strategy should help you plan for the expected, like we talked about, by understanding the, the concerns associated with the goals you choose, taking the steps um, to work towards your goals, and learning ways to balance, um, particularly uh, in completing your goals, and then preparing for the unexpected, being aware that situations like LTC, long-term care when you're in retirement, can totally derail your, your retirement. If you haven't had that plan for or set, you can have that million dollars set aside for just your retirement. But if you have that unexpected cost for long-term care where you're spending, and especially in California, 800, uh, excuse me, 80,000 to $120,000 a year in long-term care for home care, that can definitely derail your strategy that you had set in place. So preparing for the unexpected and, and meeting with your financial advisor, going over your strategy saying, well, if this were to happen, how do I have this planned and backed up for? Is definitely something that um, we need to start doing. Um, well, everyone needs to start doing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis or on a quarterly basis with their financial advisor. And then put it, positioning your portfolio for, bo for both, excuse me, by addressing the unexpected and the expected while balancing po potential issues and trade-offs. So going into the next one, um, this, is a, this is a definitely... Uh, something that a lot of people know about the rule of 72 is basically, and you can use it two ways, um, is basically calculating how long it would take to double your money based on the time and the rate that you have. So for example, if you're, if you have a port, excuse me, if you have a portfolio set up where you're achieving 4% annually in that portfolio and you want to say, Hey, how long, if I'm achieving this 4%, will it take to uh, double my money in cases? So then you would take 72 divided by four, you'll come up with the number 18 years. So 18 years might be right on time for you, might be right um, uh, schedule or it might be behind schedule, which say, hey, I need to get a little bit more aggressive in my portfolio where then you say, hey, what about if I achieve 9%? So then you take 72 divided by nine, and then you get eight years um, is, is how long it would take to double your money in, in, in that essence. And then you also can kind of do it on a backdoor route where you can divide 72 by the amount of years you want to double your money. And then it will then that, that calculation will give you the rate of return you need to achieve to double your money in that aspect. So this is just a simple rule that you can ask yourself um, or, or plan for at home. It's a simple calculation um, that I definitely wanted to share with everyone. So next slide, please. Perfect. So let's revisit uh, Denise for a little bit. Um, Denise, as a few years later after we talked about, um, she has a new job. She's doing financially well based on the, the systems and processes that she set up in place for her. Um, she has exciting news. She's remarried. Um, she's married to Steve. He has. Uh, they have a six-year-old daughter together, Bree. Um, they're the center of, of their life. Um, she's thinking about financial goals again, and she realizes that Bree will be headed to off to college before they know it. Um, so, did, so Steve and Paul, I mean Denise and Steve, excuse me, um, will will make sure that they're saving enough for higher education. How do they do that? They use the rule of seventy-two. Um, they definitely just did the seventy-two divided by eighteen years. Found out the rate of return that they needed. Talked to their financial advisor about that type of situation. And they came up with a plan and acted on that plan and sent Bree to college. And this is just another um, example of how um, financial planning can help um, achieve these goals and not make things seem so daunting when you need to think about coming up with two hundred or three hundred thousand for a college uh, education for a child. 
Um, next slide, please. And you can actually skip this one as well. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so next, leading into a disciplined approach. So discipline is, is definitely um, something that is key. I mean, absolute key to financial success. Um, you can have all the dollars in, in the world, but if you don't have a dis disciplined approach on how you're going to spend that, budget that, then almost anyone can, can run out of money in, in certain circumstances. Um, so the first thing I always, you probably heard, um, is pay yourself first. So that's paying your bills each month on time, writing a check to your savings or your investment account, or having that systematically even set up with your bank account, meaning every third Friday of the month, I'm going to, uh, it automatically pulls from my bank account $200 to send to my investment account, or those bills are all, already on auto pay. Something like this can definitely help you stay disciplined um, and have a disciplined approach going forward, which can definitely help out your financial success going forward for sure. And then next slide, please. And then just going over the four C's of systematic investing. So as you heard me mentioning with the disciplined approach, um, to stay disciplined with systematic investing, meaning putting that $200 um, in place into your uh, investment account or into your savings account definitely helps with these four C's. In terms of convenience, systematic investing helps you get started by making um, your investments automatic, like I mentioned. Once you decide on a fixed dollar amount to invest um, on a systematic basis, you've taken procrastination out of the equation. Um, and since you don't have to think about it month to month, you can cross several savings goals off your, your list when you when you come when it comes to that um, and is built in into the discipline. And with that approach, consistency, um, you're more uh, accumulating consistently or, or, or um, steadily, excuse me, regarding regarding the market movement. So no matter if the market's going up, if the market's going down. Um, this type of situation helps you stay focused on the, the core principle and what you can kind of control. And that's putting those dollars to work every month, regardless if the market's up or down, because as the famous Warren Buffett once said, it's not about timing the market, which a lot of people try to do. Timing is not about timing the market. It's about time in the market. So with that systematic um, investment program, you have the choice to invest in mutual funds, annuities, individual stocks, um, exchange traded funds or index funds like you you may have heard. Um, you have that's that's leading into the choice that you have. And then lastly, systematic investment allows you to focus on what you can control. You can control the set amount of dollars that you put aside. You can control the um, the in type of investments that you're you're going to do. But you cannot control the volatility in the market. You can't control whether the market goes up or goes down. Nobody's ever been able to really do that. Um, so that's definitely the four C's there that I wanted to touch base on with some things that we can do. And then the next slide you can skip over to uh, the trip. Perfect. Um, so there's multiple different ways you can plan, um, save for retirement. Um, the traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs, you may have heard. Just a high summary, go over those again. Um, Roth, IRA, uh, Roth IRAs are, are used with after-tax dollars. Everything grows tax-free. And when you pull those assets out um, after a certain age, after 59 and a half, technically according to the IRS, those dollars are tax-free. Your principles actually uh, can be pulled out after a five-year holding period, um, but only the principal, not necessarily the gains. Um, so yes, definitely the Roth IRA is after-tax dollars in a bucket. They grow tax free. And when you pull them out for retirement, they are tax free as well. Traditional IRA, you'll put those dollars in with pre-tax dollars or after tax dollars and you'll get a tax credit or a tax write off on your on your uh, taxes going forward. Um, those grow tax deferred, meaning through the period of time from, let's just say, 30 to 67, those, those grow tax free. You don't have to worry about paying a, a yearly tax bill when it comes to that or even when you sell or uh, buy anything, you don't have to. It uh, doesn't create a tax a little bit, but when you retire, um, you will then pay according to your ordinary income at that, that point in time, a tax when it comes to that. These Both of these can be a, um, a great tool to help you save and plan for retirement down the road. Um, and I definitely uh, do a lot of business with tr traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs. Next slide, please. Perfect. And then we can skip this one as well. So <clears throat> the biggest mistake people make when it comes to investing is not getting started. Um, one of the, uh, I guess you can say, 
biggest uh, things that I see in the office when it comes to um, helping individuals out is someone being afraid to come and speak to a financial advisor. It can be daunting. And for example, a lot of firms out there, I won't say any names, but a lot of firms out there, if you don't have that 250000 that 500000 that million dollars, they won't even create an appointment with you. You won't have a financial advisor. You'll have to stick to a 1-800 number where you talk to someone different every single time that they don't understand you. They don't understand your goals. They don't understand um, what's important to you and what you currently have in place and why you have it in place. Um, so that's definitely the value that we have at Edward Jones. Like I mentioned before, we, we, we know your strategies. We know what you have in place. We know your daughter's name, where, the, where she goes to school. Um, and these type of things can definitely um, help. But like I mentioned, the biggest mistake is people being afraid to say, hey, I only have a thousand dollars. I only have five thousand dollars. I only have ten thousand dollars to invest. And I don't know if I want to go to a financial advisor. That might be embarrassing. It's not embarrassing at all. Getting started is the best thing you can do. And that's kind of where I uh, built my career on is helping individuals, no matter how much they have, if they have $5 in, in their savings, if they have $50 million in their savings. I treat everyone the same. As long as you appreciate help and want help, I help them. Um, and that's definitely something that I kind of built my career on is being there, being a, um, a resource to my community and being able to help people that are just, just getting started or don't currently have a plan and helping them achieve that. Next slide, please. Which leads us into our last question of the day. How can I stay on track? So once you have that strategy in place, um, reviewing it is, is probably the most important part of the whole entire process for better or worse. Um, life has is a lot of surprises um, to be diligent, to update your budget worksheet regularly, um, to revisit your financial strategy. For instance, if your child, um, you plan for 18 years, you put in $200 or $300 a month, every single month for your college education or your child's college education, excuse me. And your, your kid is a rock star athlete and get a full scholarship. How does that affect you going forward? How, what, what is the next step? How do you pivot from that? Or that same scenario, you saved all of those dollars, you met all of those, uh, that full scholarship or that full um, tuition need to go to the University of Southern California, but then your child decides to go to medical school, so you possibly didn't save enough. So to make sure that you're staying on track at all times and review these goals are something that are, are critical to your success um, going forward and, and being able to, to create a strategy to stay on task. Um, next slide, please. Um, so like I mentioned, don't wait. So that's the worst thing anyone can do is do not wait until you're forced to take responsibility of your financial future. Um, the most important thing you can, um, if, I, if I can leave you with today, is don't wait to be forced to take responsibility of your, your financial future. Putting uh, Put off thinking um, is definitely something that can be detrimental to your long-term financial goals and success. And it's essentially giving up your control because if you wait too long, certain things are out of your control. You're, you'll be possibly forced to work a little bit longer or uh, not live the lifestyle you want to live in retirement. So last slide. So just to follow up, um, where, I'm, where am I today? That's question number one. In other words, gaining an understanding of um, your current financial situation, which we've included in the budget worksheet um, to help you during that process. And then where would you like to be today? Um, so understanding the difference between your values and your goals, um, using your values to create the course of your goals and then start um, to break them down in specific niche goals. Um, can I get there? Determine your goals um, if they're realistic um, or, or uh, creating a smart test to see if, if you can attain them, if they're uh, time bound. And then fourth, uh, how can I get there? In other words, developing a strategy you can use, such as systematic investing, um, em employer-sponsored plans, or those traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, or individual accounts, depending on that particular goal. How can you stay on track is the last one. Um, didn't take us too long to address this question, it's just, but it's still one of the most important aspects of the overall strategy, which are regular reviews um, going forward. And then last step, I mean, next slide, last slide. Um, so getting started today, things you can do. Um, I'm always here to be a resource to anyone on this call, your friends or family or anyone um, that you think might be uh, find anything I said valuable. Um, I'm always uh, available to uh, 
meet in this pandemic world via Zoom, via in-office appointment. I can meet you at a Starbucks. Um, but I definitely uh, appreciate the time we spent here today um, and definitely getting started. I'll uh, send some emails or some uh, information over to Barbara so we can get that set up. But um, in the next 48 hours, I just challenge everyone um, that, that is listening or out there to go over these five questions. Think about everything that I, I talked about and ask yourself, um, how can I create this plan today, which is the value I bring as a financial advisor at Edward Jones, is I don't let you go through these, these questions or uh, these uh, processes alone. And, that, and that's also part of the, uh, the planning part that I help you come up with is where, where you want to be today and how we can stay on track. Um, so that being said, I know there's <clears throat> a lot of information given out there. I appreciate the time. Uh, hopefully um, you, you took away one thing, but I'm open to any type of questions or, or answers or anything that you uh, have on your mind um, at this point in time. Hey, Paul. Hey there. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, that was a great presentation. I think you've shared so much valuable information. And I think there's a, you take a step back and there's almost a point where you just realize it's just some math. You just need to do the backwards math and kind of see what you need to do every day to get there. Exactly. Um, and so one of the questions um, I have are, besides not starting early enough, what are some of the other big mistakes you see people make? Um, I mean, as, as my, my, my grandmother would say, living beyond your means, meaning not living within your budget and not um, creating that plan. And, and so taking a step back to answer that question <clears throat> is you'll have someone that's planning, let's just say prior, let's just say 2019, I um, I just got this new job or I have these plans in place where starting in 2020, I'm going to be making $200,000 a year, but they're currently only making 80. But that process, did that 200,000 never happened. So they put themselves in financial trouble, um, kind of spending ahead, planning on those dollars. So that's definitely something that I uh, see quite often in our industry. Um, and then also, like I mentioned, not planning for that unexpected. So in that same scenario, 2020 happened, you lost your job and you didn't, you spent all your money on your marketing or your savings account on, on X, Y, Z, and you didn't plan ahead. Those, those type of things are, are definitely quite frequent. Uh Oh, I think you're muted. Yeah, I can't, I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you, Barbara. Okay, great. Well, I've in the background, but I'm listening and hanging out no for problem. the word that you said. Took all the copious notes. So, um, so great. Yeah. So we know some of the mistakes are not getting started and also living beyond your means. And then the third thing you said is um not planning for the unexpected. Yes, not planning for the, if we haven't learned anything in COVID, we've learned that for sure, right? Exactly. I mean, so many people were like out of work or um bills were piling up. They really needed a savings to dip into and it wasn't there. And it's a hard lesson to learn. So um, where do you suggest or how do you suggest people start saving for a rainy day fund? Like it, I always think automatic is best, like an automatic deposit. What do you suggest to your clients? Definitely automatic. Um, and then trying to also beat those rates at the bank are also advantageous to that success, meaning there are uh, avenues and investments that you can get in that are almost as safe as, as putting it in, in savings, um, but can achieve a higher interest rate rather than that 0 0.008 that the bank gives you. Um, but having those plans is what I like to call it as not necessarily emergency fund as your spare tire, that thing that's in your trunk that you might need. I love um, that. Exactly. So creating that spare tire is something I help clients with all the time. And we also at Edward Jones, just like the bank can, pull those at those dollars or that $200 a month from that day you get paid. And so you don't even realize that it's gone. It's just, Hey, I have this after I pay myself first and then going forward, this is my budget. Just kind of separating what I even have over there with, uh, with Paula Edward Jones. I love it. And you said one other thing that I think is really super important and it's, you know, so many people feel like um, they don't have the money to see a financial planner. Mm -hmm. um, so when they go to see you, Paul, how do you charge for your services? 
that's a phenomenal question. And that's also, like I mentioned, some, a reason why somebody would um, be, I guess, you hesitant to go see a financial advisor. You might be shocked, but to come meet with me, to go over your financial goals, to create a plan, to do all of that good stuff, to see where you are is absolutely 100 percent free. It's not wow. going to cost you a single penny to do that. I don't charge hourly. I don't charge by the advice I give or anything like that. The only time you incur a charge, a cost or a fee would be in the essence of if you were to purchase an investment and then investments um, that we have over here at Edward Jones are are different cost basis, meaning stocks cost different than bonds. Bonds cost mm -hmm. different than mutual funds. Mutual funds cost different than insurance. So um, going forward, you always know um, at my branch what you pay for before you even pay for it. I love um, it. But like I mentioned, to meet with me, to go over your goals, to do a comprehensive uh, financial review, 100% free. Love it. Um, and I hear so many great things about Edward Jones. We have a few Edward Jones advisors on here, and we're so glad you're on here because you've just opened the door to so many women who are feel like, what's it going to cost? What are they going to charge me? Um, do I have enough money or I don't have a lot of money? I don't have an estate, you know, but uh, what we're saying here at Purse Strings is reach out to people like Paul and just get started. Have a phone call, email him. All of his information is down here below and um, have that conversation. You know, action creates action. So we want you to take that first step and go out and contact uh, Paul and, you know, just have a conversation, get your questions answered starting Today is the absolute best first step. I agree. And we and a lot of people also think that it's just a one stop stop, uh, one stop shop with me. I work in a comprehensive team, meaning I have a CPA that I work with. I have an estate attorney that I work at real estate agents. I have a team that I definitely lean on for certain categories, because, for example, if someone has a question about taxes, I'm not a tax professional, so I can reach out to that person or create a relationship with their current advisor or CPA that they work with for over 20 years. I have no problem creating new relationships with those type of people. So I said, hey, I'm thinking about selling this investment, Mr. CPA. What do you think about this when it comes to taxes and how it affects them going forward? So yeah. it's holistic planning is the key. <clears throat> yeah, because it's never one person. You really need a team of advisors because everybody has a specialty and that's the way it should work. So I can't thank you enough, Paul, for being here today at Purse Strings and sharing your wisdom. I've captured all your notes. And as we said in the beginning, we've recorded this. We're going to put it with your notes and all your contact information and post it out here on, on the Facebook page. We're going to share it with you, Paul. You can share it with your local community Perfect, and let you. everyone know that you're Purse Strings Approved. You're one of our great Purse Strings Approved professionals. We appreciate you very much. I definitely appreciate it. And I don't uh, wear that badge lightly. I uh, am very honored to be a part of this um, effort going forward with Purse Strings Values and Goals. And I appreciate the time, everyone. Okay. Thank you. And thanks, everyone. We'll see you here next week. Thank you. Bye.